Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Wood for Kick Guru. I'm here with the Zeus at uh, CES 2019. They've taken an entire floor of this hotel and they've got a lot of stuff to show. JJ is going to talk us through the gear behind us. Uh, first, he's going to tell us who he is, what he does, and then he's going to start talking and I'm just going to listen. <laughs> Hi, I'm JJ for Asus. I'm our technical product marketing manager for our component series of products, so pretty much all the DIY stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and first start it off with, I think, GPUs. I think a lot of you are interested in the 2080 series. And so what we've done for this gen is done something pretty wild. Uh, we've essentially gone ahead and integrated a fully self-contained water cooling solution, so an AIO type cooler, and we've built it into a card. So there's no external tubing, there's no reservoir, there's no radiator, nothing you have to worry about. It's all literally built into the card. Well, how did we manage that? Through a lot of engineering. Literally over two years and through a lot of design iteration, we essentially have combined this whole thing together. So you can see that massive contact plate. This is significantly larger uh, than what you would have with a traditional CLC-based unit. This makes full coverage with the GPU die as well as with the memory. You then have that full cast aluminum frame for the VRM. And then, of course, you can see we have still our high-performance triple fan assembly to cool everything down there. Now, in terms of clock speeds, some definitely serious clock speeds on this card. In real-world gaming scenarios, you're going to see consistently over 1,900 megahertz in terms of that GPU boost clock. 800 megahertz factory overclock on the memory, which is exceedingly rare on RTX graphics cards. And of course, those of you asking about the RGB, yes, three zones of RGB, just like any of our strict series cards. And we still keep our Fan Connect 2 headers on the card, as well as an RGB header. And there will also be a quick button profile on the back of this card, so that if you want to quickly be able to optimize different presets of operation, you can click that button and switch into a different operating mode. So overall, if you're looking pretty much for the best self-contained RTX 2080 Ti, it's going to be the Matrix. I'm going to jump in now and do my little bit before I go to the next one. I'll forget this. Uh, pricing for that, it looks like it's going to be four, maybe 500 bucks more expensive than the so-called standard card. It is also quite notable that the standard card physically is basically the same. They've put that cooling system into an amazingly small form factor. Uh, they bin the parts, as JJ was saying, and it, it looks entirely awesome. Uh, now, moving along, by contrast, we've got the reference design. We want to go along to this motherboard here. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, JJ. Yeah, this is just... Um uh, this is essentially what we have the ability to do when we're essentially um, not encumbered by, I think, rationale design. Uh, we essentially have co-partnered with Intel to be a partner for the Dominus platform. So you have the unlock Xeon in terms of what you can have handier. And this literally weighs almost 10 pounds uh, because we're essentially fully utilizing aluminum across the entirety of this board. It's just super beefy. You can see a full custom VRM solution from top to bottom. All these fins run literally the entirety of the board. This is a 14 layer. PCB. This is essentially almost unheard of. It's only used in our professional server series or workstation series product. Four active fans, massive power delivery. You got dual U.2. You've got six channel memory, 192 gigabytes. Think about running literally Battlefield 5 straight from memory, right? That is literally a realistic scenario on this board. You've got dual DIM.2, so of course you can run your four NVMe M.2 based drives, ESS Saber DAC, uh, you've got quad RGB headers. 10G LAN, you have a full display on here in terms of our LiveDAS display, and of course, all that connectivity, 160 megahertz Wi-Fi support. Uh, this is pretty much just going to be for the 1% of users out there, but if you're looking for the absolute um, most top-end DIY-based platform that's going to exist, it will be the Dominus. I counted. He drew breath three times then, only three times. <laughs> if we come in close, uh, one point to mention here is we've got two 24-pin uh, ATX connectors and we've got a whole bunch of EPS up at the top of the board. If you just stand that up, you can see obviously EPS as we know is for the uh, processor. So we've got two sides there, so we've got support for two power supplies. The word here is, and they're being incredibly uh, cagey, is to get the full benefit of this motherboard, the full benefit pro to get the full benefit of this motherboard and processor, two power supplies required, which I think means, uh, do a bit of maths, you're talking past a thousand watts, that's my take on that. Before we go on to the next thing, if you just spin around, Bryony, and look at this system here, and we'll see here we have the uh, Fantex setup that uh, Boom was discussing at the Fantex suite with the VRM cooler that they got. So that's the second of that setup we've uh, actually seen, and clearly they've got some processor in there running, I wonder what the processor is. I wonder if we can find out somehow. Because uh, previously we've just seen uh, dead boards and we've seen uh, bits of metal, but something somewhere is running. 
and then we spin around and we go down here and we move this chap and talk, actually I'm going to say stuff and you stop when I'm wrong. Sure. So here we have the ROG Strix AIO. Mm -hmm. Now we've got two other uh, AIOs from the uh, Ace Tech family uh, which we saw at Computex which has since been released. The complaint then was that they were brutally expensive. This is a subtle revision, you still get a display, it's just basically got less control and it's going to be cheaper. How much cheaper is going to make a massive difference because if it's a pretty Ace Tech and it's say 120 that's one thing and if it's a pretty Ace Tech it's 150 160 that's a different thing so the pricing is going to be the absolute key thing there we know this now here is where I went wrong when I entered the room I looked at this board the Rampage 6 Extreme Omega and then I looked at this board the Zenith Extreme Alpha and I completely missed the joke which is it's from Alpha to Omega over to you JJ move in talk us through these yeah so we've gone ahead and refreshed uh, for the X299 and X399 platform so uh, I, I'd say on the opposite end of what you would have with let's say the Dominus based platform where that's really for the 1% this is still of course exceedingly high end but this is realistic this is really for the users that are looking for the absolute best experience possible for X299 or X399 I'm going to use one board for reference because almost the exact design features and functionality are contiguous between the two boards so you've got again that kind of Dominus treatment until you have that full aluminum finish all across here. Full new custom VRM assembly. You can see the massive heat pipe that literally runs the acquired length of this VRM stage array. Two active fans in there. Entirely new inductor designed for super high-end performance for overclocking. The DIM.2 base design again. You've got U.2, you've got the ESS Sabre DAC. We've optimized the slot spacing specifically for 20 series cards. So if you want to be able to run the larger profile cards in SLI configurations, the boards are purpose designed for it. This is something you didn't necessarily need in the previous gen because of course they were more designed for the previous 10 series where you had more traditional slot spacing. Uh, from there, of course, you have the 10G LAN, traditional 1G LAN, RGB illumination for the high-end audio, 160 megahertz Wi-Fi, the fully integrated IO shield, Again, our live dash based display. And overall, again, if you're looking for the best when it comes to either X399 or 299, it'll either be the Alpha or the Omega. He's practiced that line. Thanks, JJ. Thanks very much. As we leave the ROG room, we pass this, this ROG Swift PG35 VQ, once again with the model codes. Uh, a great big curved monitor, clearly, obviously one of the ultimate gamer type products. The point here is it's got 500 lighting zones. It, I must confess, it's given me that whole kind of uh, fisheye uh, GoPro kind of thing. I mean, it's a bit queasy to look at, but it does certainly look impressive. That is... Yeah, that's an interesting monitor. It's not my personal preference of the monitors, however, that Azus has here. There's another beast elsewhere that I like even more. Moving away from the ROG area to two things that should not be of interest to me, but they are of burning interest to me. We have Studio Book S. This is the first workstation laptop from Azus. Uh, they've had this gaping hole in the product range up to now, so it is Xeon, it is Quadro. It looks like that. I mean, it looks really swish, but the fact is packing Xeon and Quadro, that is new. And then we also have a matching ProArt screen to go with. But what I'm really, really excited about is this monitor over here. This is the Azus ProArt PA32UCX. Now, model codes, once again, they absolutely are just appalling. Um, it looks quite awesome. The thing is, it uses micro LEDs to ha give you 1,000 zones of lighting, and it just looks by eye remarkable. Uh, I suspect, however it looks, through the camera, through YouTube, and on whatever screen you're looking at, you're going to lose a bunch of the impact. But by eye, this is just mind-blowing. Uh, it's an inch thick. There's an awful lot of hardware in there. Presumably, there's an awful lot of cooling, uh, but they won't tell us about the pricing. Now, we saw that 27-inch 4K panel at uh, Computex end up being like two and a half grand. It was a fortune. Uh, this, I'm quite sure, is going to be far, far more, but the spec of it is absolutely mind-boggling, and this is something I would absolutely just love to own. Not regardless of price, because you can never say that, but it is mind-blowing. Okay, I'm with Sasha from ASUS. Uh, you've seen him on video before a few times now. This particular laptop, he showed me this laptop uh, at first week of December. The video went live a couple of days ago. Uh, he was under the strictest of strict NDAs, as I made clear in that video, which is why the video itself, he was talking about details of the laptop. And now he's gonna talk about the meat and potatoes. 
Right, so uh, spec-wise, you're looking at a 2080 Max-Q, and it is the slimmest 17-inch gaming laptop on the world, in the world, so 17.8 millimeters, which is pretty impressive if you look at it and uh, if you lift it up and hold it in your hands, 2.6 something kilos, so yeah, very nice. Uh, the panel and everything else we already talked about, um, do you want me to go through those details as well? Yeah. Yeah, so 144 hertz, three millisecond G-Sync panel, and we're able to do G-Sync without having uh, to sacrifice battery life because we have our own proprietary GPU switch technology. So when you want G-Sync, when you're playing games, you got G-Sync, and if you want to go out and you want to have long battery life, you can switch to Optimus mode, and you can have long battery life because you can park that NVIDIA GPU and make it go sleep because you're not really using it. Um, and the keyboard, per key RGB, you can see it lights up really nice, um, very bright. Each key can be a different color. Volume wheel as well. Tap to unmute, tap to mute. Increase the volume, reduce the volume, all very intuitive. What else is really cool about this is the Type-C charging, which we have across the whole Zephyrus series now. So obviously over Type-C you can't play games because you need 280 watts. That's unfortunately not possible over Type-C yet, maybe in the future. Um, but when you're playing games, you're at home, so you have your big heavy adapter at home. But when you go out and when you care about battery life, that's when you can bring a Type-C charger with you. So Type-C chargers are much smaller, much lighter, and that's actually enough to get you through the day if all you're doing is just, you know, uh, productivity or browsing the web, Facebook, YouTube. At that, at that moment, your system is only pulling around 30, 40 watts, and that's perfectly doable with a Type-C charger. Plus, you have Type-C chargers almost everywhere these days, so you can just use one um, at your friend's place or in some, some shops or at the university. Excellent. Thanks, Sasha. So when Sasha was with us before, he was not even able to show us the per-key RGB because if the system was on, it might have leaked that it had next-gen graphics, blah, 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 blah. So now we've done it to death. The next stage has to be, I think that's three stages of preview, and now we're looking to review the blessed thing. Looking forward to getting your hands on because the original 15-inch uh, Zephyrus was very, very successful. This is bigger. Hopefully it's considerably better, in which case it must be very good indeed. And we've swapped rooms. We're now near the GZ700 mothership I still find mothership to be a very strange code name uh, when Sasha came to see us before he brought all these bits of metal he did not bring the main board he's now gonna talk specs right so um, this is the board you can see and it's pretty impressive if you think about it. this is a full RTX 2080 not a max Q it's a full-on 2080 max uh, full-on RTX 2080 you have the uh, i9 8950hk as well factory overclock to 4.8 in our system you have two memory slots on this side and two memory slots on that side and uh, it's pretty impressive if you think about how much performance you have in there and this is basically the VGA and this is the motherboard if you think about it the rest is all io so if you have a lot of pcb layers it's really crazy how compact you can get this stuff now it's crystal clear why sasha couldn't bring that to us before because obviously that gives away all the secrets about what's going on inside the mothership but now we've seen it yeah you've got the stand vertically you've got the separate keyboard and you've also got one heck of a lot of performance and that was what he couldn't tell us before and you will see azus has won a great many ces awards i'm just going to stand in front of those as there are other media's names you don't want to popularize those and here we we have Mothership running, finally. Sasha, give us the very brief run through. Right, so uh, for desktop replacements, there are a lot of people who still want a desktop replacement. They just want the extra performance, they need the performance, and they don't want to go for a slimmer laptop that sacrifices that performance. And uh, when we asked them, uh, our customers who bought desktop replacement laptops, how can we make it better? Uh, the main feedback was they want it to be more ergonomic. They want it to be even closer to a desktop. So as you can see, with Mothership, you do get that. You can move the keyboard around however you want to. You can adjust the panel as well. You can recline it further. You can just ditch this keyboard if you don't like it. Everybody has their own favorite keyboard, right? Just bring it, just bring your own keyboard, use your own keyboard, and uh, you can see it's right flat on the table. It's not raised up like on thick clamshell desktop replacement laptops, so it's much more ergonomic to work on. Absolutely brilliant. Finally, we see Mothership running. Obviously, as with the Zephyrus, the next thing is to get one in and to review the socks off it. That was our whistle-stop tour of the Azus Floor of the Trump Hotel. They've got a massive range of products. There's going to be plenty more information in photos and words on Kit Guru. The video, frankly, scratches the surface, but we've touched on the key products, products that are truly going to change the way we look at gaming and such like over the next year. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, meh, thumbs down. Hit the bell button and we'll let you know about new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is Azus at CES 2019.